Oh Lord, the Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, thankful for life, thankful for the blessings. We pray that uh, you'll be with us now as we look at this chapter, uh, chapter 20. And we pray that everything may be done according to your will. And we pray for the presence of our Holy Spirit to enlighten us and guide us and help us to see wonderful things in your word. This we pray in the worthy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it's him, we'll start with the hymn, five, six, seven, have thou an own way, Lord. We'll take verse one. Anyone for verse two? Five, six, seven. I will. Verse three. I will. Thank you. And verse four. Anyone for verse four? Have thou known why, Lord? Five, six, seven. Okay, we'll finish verse four. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own Search me and try me, Master, today. Wash me just now, Lord, dull all shall see. Christ only always holding in me. I think that's the wrong sir. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power open, surely is thine. Touch me and be. Have I no way? Thank you for the lovely singing. Mm -hmm. Just share the screen. My device moves, so is this the last um, uh, paragraph that we read? Could I, I'm not sure, because it was it it moved a bit. Can anybody remember? I will, I'm just opening my device. I, I normally highlight way we, okay. but it's taking it's taking its time to um, to open up. Sometimes it's uh, moved and I wasn't sure. 
<laughs> yeah, but I'll let you know once the device is uh, is running because I I normally put a highlighter where we have stopped. On this one, you can't do that. This one, I don't think. Yeah. Mm. What? Why is it? Hmm? Wait. And usually when you're waiting for it, that's when it takes its sweet time. <laughs> yes, they, they always play against you. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. But you can carry on while it's... um. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah while it's opening up. We can read this one again, I think. And then... Uh... Oh, I remember. We remember we did this one because I remember the birds, you, you know... The, the sunshine seeing cruel, the songs of the birds, a mockery. You know, I remember that how feel, how how different his feeling was now. So we'll we'll start the next one if it's not um, we got a recap. Yeah, we, we'll do the recap first then. Yes. Um... Yes, he knew that um, uh, Jesus could heal. He, 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 uh, uh, the man knew that Jesus could heal. He left with the confidence that his son would be healed. He had peace in his heart like he'd never known before. You know, Jesus gives peace in your heart, you know. Um, we must keep faith in Christ even when things go bad for us. Um... Well, things went a bit. We planned yesterday to yeah. go to go to get our visas at um in London, and uh, we had to wait for the email. Yeah, they send you an email. So they tell you they're ready. ready. We got the email at half past four. And we had to be there at half past five. So obviously we didn't go. <laughs> we have to go Thursday now. You know you can't go before an email. It's never get up there and find, and they're not ready because it's a long way. So things don't always go to plan. Yeah, and. Uh, they, they saw the change in the child's face. They saw that life was, was um, you know, his life was um, coming back. You know, he, he looked, he looked um, well. You know, uh, when and they asked what, and the, the man asked well, what time uh, Jesus, um, uh, what time the child's face, you know, looked better. And and it, it turned it turned out to be exactly the same time as Jesus spoke, um, told the man that the child would live. You know, so. yeah. And we as we stopped. Yeah. Yeah, we stopped at uh, DA one nine nine point two. Yeah. So that, yeah. yeah, that's right. And we are starting yeah. DA it's two two hundred point one. Yes. Right. Yes, that's right. Thank you. And it, yeah, it reminds me of Hezekiah. You know when um he he, um, he was told he was going to die and he prayed for love fifteen years and uh, was given unto him. Then we had some powerful testimonies. Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. testimonies yesterday. So, uh, the Sister Arlene, Sister Sharon, and Sister Hope. Yeah, it was very powerful testimonies about people being healed and uh, that. Um, so, you know, tes testimonies, um, they, they encourage people, so continue with the testimonies. You do, because you, you actually know the people that are giving them, you know. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes you know the person who it's happened to, you know, the incident. Yeah. And that's... Um, and we had a testimony about some from Sister Angela as well, also. So that's where we got to. We ended up with testimonies. When we start on testimonies, you know, it's so good, you know, it's so encouraging. So we will continue with the, the reading now. So it's paragraph DA201. OK, 
Calvary to me. The father hurries on to greet his son. He clasps him to his heart as one restored from the dead. Thank, um, thanks God again and again for this wonderful restoration. The noble man longed to know more of Christ uh, as afterwards he heard his teachings and he and all his household became disciples. There affliction was sanctified to the conversion of the entire family. Tidings of the miracle spread and in Capernaum where so many of his mighty works were performed, the way was prepared for Christ's personal ministry. He who blessed the nobleman at Capernaum is just as desirous of blessings, but like the afflicted father, we are often led to seek Jesus by the desire for something, some earthly good, and upon granting our request, we rest our confidence in his love. The Saviour longs to give us greater blessings than we ask, and he delays the answer to our request, that he may show us the, the evil for our own hearts and our deep need of his grace. He de desires us to renounce the selfishness that leads us to seek him. Confessing our helplessness and bitter needs, we are to trust ourselves wholly to his love. Desire of Ages, page uh, 200.3. Yes, the father was, he was uh, so joyful that his son had been, um, well, as it were, brought from the dead because he was dying. And, uh, you know, he clasped me in his heart and as one rejoiced from the dead, as one restored from the dead. And thank God again and again for this wonderful restoration. Sometimes we pray for things, pray for things, and when we get the answer, we don't thank as many times as we've prayed. You know, as we've prayed for it, we, 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 we must thank God and, you know, thank God because he has answered our prayers. And uh, this was a joyful occasion for the, for the, the, the man. And it was, it was a witness to all the family, you it know. Was. It was. They said all the, fam all the household became disciples, you know. Yeah. You, they didn't have a choice if they were in the right mind. How could they not follow Jesus after what had happened? You know, uh, the, 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 uh, there was, you know, the, the, um, it was a blessing, you know, and they, they got the son back, and um, and that son would be a witness. I don't, we don't, we're not told how old, old he was. I don't think, but um, you know, he may have been a child that could talk. You know, he, he may not have been a, a toddler or baby, but he may have been a child that would remember. We're not sure, um, unless it's written somewhere. I don't know how. I don't know the age of the boy, but you know, it was. Um, it's the titans of the miracle spread in Capernaum where so many of his mighty works were performed. People believed in that area, you know, and so he, he, and there's some places Jesus went, he couldn't do anything because they just because of their unbelief. And, uh, um, and he says, a prophet, uh, yeah, he a prophet went, isn't, isn't uh, accepted in his own town. Yeah, he wasn't recognised in his own town, you mm. know, it's often the case. Mm. Yeah. It says, who, who, he who blessed the noble man of Capernaum is just as desirous of blessing us. But like the afflicted father, we're often led to seek Jesus by the desires for some earthly good and upon granting of our request, our confidence, uh, we rest our confidence in his love. You know, John, Jesus has answered so many prayers in our lives, you know, so we, uh, it, it gives us more confidence. And as many times you thank God that he had answered your prayers, especially when, especially years ago when you prayed for things. I think I'm glad he did answer that one. <laughs> you know, we, we don't know what's good for us sometimes. Mm. <laughs> Confessing our helplessness and bitter need, we are to trust in ourselves wholly to his love. Sister Kezia, thank you. Yes, I um, thank you, Taki sisters. Um, Good morning, everyone uh, on the platform. Yes, thank you for the time. And thank you, you know, yes, we are reminded that Christ always answers our prayers, but he's on in his own way. 
I, what I wanted to actually uh, pose to the group question is, um, we also need to be careful uh, not to be presumptuous in our prayers that he, he we are not we are we are adamant that Christ must answer this prayer. How do we know that we are being presumptuous or we are posing, you know, we are praying in faith? How do we know that? It's a question to everyone. Thank you. And we got any thoughts on the question, Sister Dorothy? Good morning. Actually, that's a very good question. Yes. That's a very good question, Sister Kezia, because um, we pray for things. Say, for example, God will never answer our prayers in a way that is contrary or not in harmony with his word. Say, for example, we pray for a job. And then job comes along, you go for an interview, you get the job, but it requires you to work on the Sabbath. And because we are so impatient, we take it and we will say God understands. So Satan also has got a way of presenting attractive things before us when we have been praying for something. But it is for us to ask God to help us to make a good choice and good judgment as to the things that may appear as though God was answering our prayers. Um, and also, God cannot bless us with things that will cause us to sin against him. He cannot, that cannot be from God. So where is it coming from? And this is not an easy one for all of us. But we must pray and say, Lord, is this the way? Is this the one? We are praying for, most people are praying for country living. If you get a house that is, say, like beyond what you can afford, is that a, an answered prayer? So we have to see things with spiritual eyes. God will never give answer us with the uh, answer our prayers in a way that it is going to cause us problems thereafter thank you yes thanks for your comments it reminds me of when we uh, went for an interview for a job and um, I went in for the interview and they showed Arlene around the place um, while I had my interview Anyway, it finished about quarter to five, you know, um, at night. And I said, well, in the winter, I'm going to have to leave early. And, you know, because of the Sabbath, and I explained the Sabbath. And the manager said, I've never heard of that before. He, li he, li he, he was sat by the window at his desk and he, he leaned right back on his chair. I thought he was going to somersault through the window. And he said, I've never heard of that before. Then he leaned forward on his desk, put his arm, hands on his desk, and he said, we will all start at the same time, and we will all finish at the same time. So as I went out the door, I says to Arlene, I says, I've lost you that job. But praise the Lord, about six months later, we, was, we, we went for an interview for another job, and it was a four and a half day week, so he finished at one o'clock, so there's no problem with the Sabbath. Mm. And that job lasted us 18 years until we retired. Well, we moved to Swindon, so we weren't going to go there. And... Um, <laughs> But the other job would have only lasted five years because that's, that's as long as the place was there. It was in the, actually in the same facility, wasn't it? It was yeah. the same, same uh, 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 you know, the, the, the place was the same. It was like a, several of several of buildings. It was one of those. And so, mm. praise the Lord. If, if the job's on the Sabbath, it's not the job for you. That's right. Thank you, Sister, uh, for those thoughts. Sister Hope. <laughs> Uh, thank you indeed. It's a wonderful question. I think you've answered it. It's according to his will. You know, because sometimes we want our will. Uh, God sees the heart. 
that indeed is seeking him. We cannot hide anything from him uh, as much as we, we, as human beings, we think that we, we, we want all these things and from him, he will give them to us. And how do you know that it's, it's from him? Again, it goes back as Sister Dorothy and the sister say, according to his will, according to his word. So also, uh, sometimes he may allow us uh, to, um, as he said to that is to in in, Det in Deuteronomy, uh, where he says he is looking to that heart. You know, he uh, as he took he took the Israelites in the way, and he was providing for them, and sometimes he tested them to see where their hearts were. You see, uh, God leads us individually, and uh, as long as it is not for, uh, if I'm answering it, I, I don't know whether I veered off the question. Sometimes I do, admittedly. But uh, it's not for our own benefit. It's not for our own, it's the, for the benefit of everyone. I think that is where we get a miss of our, in, in, our, in our prayers. What, what God gives us, it belongs to him. So, and he wants us to use it for his will and not for our own, but for everyone else. Then why wouldn't God provide if it's not just for me? It's for everyone. So if I if I ask for a house, I'm not asking for myself, for everyone. Anyone who God leads to come here, you know? So it's um, and also it reminded me of James. Uh, James chapter four, where we think, oh, maybe tomorrow, maybe I'll buy this. I'm going to have this. I'm, uh, I, I, I've put my request there. And God says, it's according to his will. Verse 15, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this and, and that. So uh, in, at the end of the day, it's God's will. And whatever it is, even in the waiting just know it's God's will. Even though it's no, it's God's will. But in all to say thanks. Amen. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. It has to be God's will. Um, thank you. Sister, Sister Early, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I think most of the things that I wanted to say, my thoughts have already been said. But uh, uh, how I see these things is if if we are petitioning, if we are asking for things of this world, then the, the question to ask oneself is, what is my motive? A sister hope say, is it to glorify the name of God, to show supreme love to him and love for another as he has loved me? But I, 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 my thoughts are, if it is intercessory prayer where you are asking for a relationship with God, whether it's yours or it's it's for another. Then I don't, I don't know. I don't believe that there is any presumption because it is the good gift after all that we, you, you, you ask for in intercessory, in, in an intercessory prayer. As Jacob said, I won't let you go until you have blessed me. So that's my thought. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts as well. Very true. Sister Kezia. Yeah, thank you, Tati Sisters. Yes, I've been answered. Uh, thank you, everybody, for those contributions. Because a lot of times, you know, as Christians, um, as we have seen, you know, a lot of, um, you know, churches springing up, you know, churches, you know, where um, it's all about prosperity. 
uh, gospel. If you do this, um, then God is going to bless you with this. And if you do this, you know, th th those really are presumptuous prayers. And our prayers should be whether, um, how is this thing which you are praying for, no matter what it is, how does it give glory to God at the end of God, of the day? How is it going to strengthen the relationship between you and God? How is it going to benefit others? A sister Hope was saying that we could say, we've prayed for a house and we want that house, Lord, to... Yes, Lord, the, God wants us to have a, a roof of our head. He wants to bless us. But is that for your own selfish needs or you want to bless others with um, those who are coming for ministry can also have a, 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 a roof over their heads and so forth? Um, so our prayers, uh, uh, you know, we have to be very careful that we are not asking for selfish prayers like we have learned from this father, that he was seeking Jesus for his own selfish motives until he had uh, been confronted by Christ. That's when he saw that, you know, um, Christ was going to give us more. So really what we should be asking for is the, is the more of you know the Holy Spirit, which will bring all the other gifts um, when He comes in our lives, uh, and these things, God knows what is necessary to be aided to us. And most of the times, when we even um, to pray to, to say, God, take me out of this affliction, God is allowed that affliction to come. It, maybe the prayer should be. Lord, what lesson do I do I learn out of what is going on uh, right now? Help me to learn the lesson so that my relationship with you um, is strengthened with what I'm going through. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts as well. It's very, very true. Uh, Sister Judith. Good morning, everyone. Mm. Mine is a question. Is it also possible that the devil can answer our prayers? Um, it, it doesn't know. If our, if our prayers are silent, he cannot read our thoughts, but he can have a good guess. He sees he sees our situation and he, he has a good guess, but he can't. we know we can't read our thoughts. But if your prayers are verbal, you know, you, so you speak it out loud then. He can do things to manipulate. That's, that's my thoughts. Any, anybody else got uh, any answers for that one? Thank you. Well, some people to be rich and famous have to give their Sister heart. Sister Sharon, um, on the whole aspect of prayers, Satan cannot hear internal prayers, but prayers that are, pray are prayed aloud, he will attempt to intervene. And we have the story, we have the scenario of Daniel is it Daniel 10 when he is praying for a solution and then um, the angel comes to him and tells him that he was being held back by by one of Satan's minions because there was a solution for the prayer to be answered but there was a spiritual um stronghold that was stopping him from coming through and of course Michael had to then intervene so we do know that even as saints when we do pray you know we the bible tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh, flesh and blood there are principalities that will try and come against us and this is why we have to be faithful and rest upon the promises of God thank you Yes, that's very true. He can't. He can't read a. a, a he can't a silent read prayer. He can't read a silent prayer. But he can. If you if you verbally speak it, then he can. He can um, manipulate things, and and you know cause the wrong things to happen. I mean, many people who want to be rich and famous to give the soul to the devil. Like the, everybody, this this um he was a pop singer, and he named himself after sixteenth century witch Alice Cooper. I mean, Alice is a woman's name anyway, and uh, and and he, he was rich and famous, and um, 
he, he, he gives he give his soul to the devil just to get to to be rich and famous so that's all he'd have in this life you know i don't know if he's alive or not but um some people do that you know to, to get what they want they'll give the soul to the devil and it's the worst thing you can do mm. Yes, thank you for those thoughts, Sister Sharon. Um, Sister, uh, Sister Kezia. Yes, thank you. To answer Sister Judith, I agree with everything that has been said as well. But also, we should always remember that when we pray, when we kneel down to pray, Sister White says the devil flees, right? But remember that the enticement of whatever you are praying for, you know, it, it could be maybe you're praying for a car or you're praying for whatever. You have to give a, a, the devil the permission to answer that prayer. Um, because sometimes, you know, we do things which are, which are not, which are contrary to, to God's um, um, word then definitely you are giving the opportunity for the enemy to answer that prayer in a way you think he has answered the prayer. Say you, you, are, you are praying for a car, you want a car, and um, you know very well that you have to pay duty, and you start looking for ways of how you can avoid you know, the law. Definitely the devil will, will, will come in and and <laughs> you know all sorts of ways to make sure that you get that car and you not pay that duty and you can't uh, uh, you you can't then uh, say yes god has answered my prayer because uh, how have you done it fraudulently so yeah your prayer will be answered in a way which not by god but you know the devil will give you things because remember these things which we we normally seek, which the uh, which the Bible says the Gentiles seek these things. They belong to 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 Satan. He says all with everything on what he has, all these things which have been invented. Yes, they can be given. That's why you see a lot of people, um, um you know, they will give their souls as the tactic teens are saying they to to the enemy and they, and they will appear with so many material things but they have no peace of 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 uh in their in their hearts because they know they have prayed to another spirit they know they've already they've made that choice it's a very clear choice which you you don't need to worry to say if you've prayed and you you are following the way that uh Satan can come and also bless you. No, no, no. You have to make that choice very clearly to say, um, yes, I, I don't mind whether I get it from Satan. You know, that, that, that's, that, I think that's, that's, that's what I wanted to just add on to what people have, have said already. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. It's very true. If you, if you try to get something the wrong way, you know it's not the Lord that's answered your prayer. And you have no peace of mind. Mm. I mean, many, many of these are so-called um, rich people, you know, and... Uh, Especially celebrities, they die young. They die young. Yeah, they die. They die a miserable death, some of mm. them as well. Mm. The devil's out to seek, to kill and destroy. Yes, thank you for those thoughts, Sister Kezia. Uh, Sister Arlene. Oh, good morning. Um, mine is like a, a confession. Um, I remember there was a time when um, there was someone that we, me and my friend used to speak about. And, um, you know, we were really, this person was, a, you know, she was just so, um, I don't know, I don't know. She was, she was just someone who um, was so hard 
And we used to speak about this person all the time. And I remember um, my friend used to say, let us pray first. And we used to pray. And then we used to speak. And it always used to bother me. But it didn't, I didn't do anything. You know, we just used to talk. And every time I went to a house, it was, it was, it was always exciting. You know, she was always excited because we we're going to speak and then we'll pray first. She'll pray first and then we'll speak. One day I went to her house and she was just about to, and I said to her, no, I don't feel comfortable with this. Why are we praying, speaking about someone else? Yeah. And we're praying and asking the Lord to bless us and come into this prayer. This is wrong. This is so wrong. And you know, you, I, it just did not occur to me that we were doing wrong. You know, it was like Satan was blinding my eyes and blinding our eyes to all what we were doing. And, and I just did not feel comfortable. And, you know, when the Lord will put things into our mind and in our heart and, and let us know that what you're doing is wrong, you know. And we, I, I, I said to my friend, you know, we, we really need to um, turn away from this because it's not right. And anyway, in the end, um, after I said that to her, and I said to her that um, I will pray. I will pray and ask for forgiveness from our God because what we were doing was wrong. Yeah, so I prayed. And do you know that... Um, I hardly go around to her house and I hardly speak to her. Not because I don't love her anymore, but because um, we haven't got anything to talk about. We haven't got anything more to talk about because that was kind of like the highlight of the day, you know? And, you know, I, I'm confessing this and I'm telling you this because I know that um, the devil can turn your mind around and your your heart to to make you stumble and do things and say things that is wrong but you know i i knew that what we were doing was wrong but just did not um it did not comprehend in my mind but praise the lord that i did um turn around and confess and and um as I said, not that I don't love her still. I do love her, but we just need to divert our mind um, back to the Lord. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that uh, that um, testimony. Uh, it's very true. You know, we've got to we have to watch out, watch what we say. Uh, it's very true, Sister Dorothy. Thank you so much, Sister Lynn, for sharing that because it's so important. I had exactly the same situation where this sister, we were friends, but it seems as though our conversation was about other people and what they are doing and their sins in their lives. And I, every time that I spoke, I, I spoke to her, I felt the need to confess. And then I felt this needs to stop. And I said, you know, and she would tell me other people's personal, very personal things that they have told her. And then she would tell me, don't tell anyone. And then I thought, I don't want my heart to be carrying so much details about people's personal lives and their sins in their lives, really. And I I said, I said, you know, no, please don't tell me because I don't think she'll be pleased if you tell me. And she said, no, so-and-so wouldn't mind. 
But then you see how the devil works. How can you know that somebody wouldn't mind? Of course a person would mind. No one likes their story, their life to be told to everyone. No one likes that. And when, when I realized that this was just going too far, as Sister Aline put it quite rightly, I just distanced myself from my sister, not because I don't love her, but because this habit, she didn't want to work with me to shake it off. And I had to do that for my sake and for her sake as well. We have no business in digging into people's personal uh, personal um, habits that are, are, not, are not good. It's actually up to us to pray that they for each other, that we may uh, forsake that habit. I, it was just so amazing the way you said it. It is like me talking. And we are not enemies. From time to time, we will pray. I will call, the sister will call me to pray, but we would pray. Imagine we were prayer partners. And then we are talking about people. It is not right. It's not right. And it is also not right when somebody tells you their personal stuff and you start praying for them openly before other people. No, the sister didn't tell you to go and pray openly about them. No, that's gossip. It's prayer gossip. We are to be confidential when people tell us their personal lives. I believe that. That is, if I've said anything that is not so right, I'm happy to be corrected. Thank you. Yes, you can gossip in your prayers, you know. It's one way of gossiping, uh, especially if it's confidential and the people don't want everybody to know about the business. Mm. Yes, you know, thank you for careful. those thoughts. Thanks for the thoughts. Mm. Well, I think now we'll, there's no more hands, so we'll read the, uh, the last paragraph. I think it's the last paragraph. Yes, would somebody like to read the last paragraph, please? The noble man. The nobleman wanted to see the fulfillment of his prayer before he should believe, but he had to accept the word of Jesus that this request was heard and the blessing granted. This lesson was also, sorry, this lesson we also have to learn, not because we see or feel that God hears us, are we to believe. We are to trust in his promises. When we come to him in faith, every petition enters the heart of God. When we have asked for his blessing, we should believe that we receive it and thank him that we have received it. Then we are to go about our duties, assured that the blessing will be realized when we need it most. When we have learned to do this, we shall know that our prayers are answered. God will do for us exceeding abundantly according to the riches of his glory and the working of his mighty power. Ephesians 3 verse 20 and 16 and 1 verse 19. Amen. Thank you for reading. Well, this is the last paragraph. Um, it said the noble man wanted to see the fulfillment of his prayer before, you know, before he should believe. But he had to accept the word of Jesus that his request was heard and the blessing was granted. Yes, he had to, he, he had to he, Jesus said this boy would live and he had, to be, he had to believe that, he had to accept that. And uh, he did. What a blessing. Mm, what a blessing. Mm. You know, so we had to trust his promises when we come to him in faith. Every petition enters the heart of God. He, he hears all our prayers. But he, and he answers them the best way possible. You know, He's got our best interests at heart. Mm. So sometimes we pray for things we shouldn't pray for, and, and uh, he doesn't grant them. Mm. And then if we're down the line, we're thankful that uh, I'm glad he didn't answer that prayer. Because yeah. circumstances change. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, and uh, you don't know what's going to happen the next minute. You don't, and uh, nothing's guaranteed. 
that's why I'm looking forward to going to heaven because whatever if you start a project you know you'll be able to finish it you know there won't be any um, things happening that you're not planning uh, you know it'll because we it's this life is so uncertain the only certain thing in, in this life is God yeah Sister Bacchesia and then Sister Arlene thank you Oh, let Sister Arlene go first. I've, I've been speaking a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was having a conversation with my friend yesterday about the same thing about praying. And, um, you know, she's not confident in praying at all. Yes. And because she listened to other people pray, she believes that, you know, their prayers are strong. And their prayer is goes up to God. You know, those prayer, you know, like prayer, you know, when people say prayer warrior, I don't know where that came from, but, um, you know, their prayer is powerful. And um, I said to her that, you know, Peter prayed and said, Jesus saved me. That was his prayer and that was powerful. And Jesus saved him doesn't matter what is it's, it's from your heart is what you say in your heart that that counts it's not um because that person is intellectually intelligent or that person has got more words than you you're saying whatever it is from your heart you know it shouldn't make a difference um you know you feel that you can't because I used to feel like that I my palms used to sweat I used to sweat underneath my arms as, as soon as anyone used to call my name to pray I used to like, no, please don't call me. Please don't call me because I can't pray. I don't know how to pray. But, you know, my pastor told me that if you can't pray, write it down. And that's what I used to do. I used to write it down and, and, and I used to say it. But then afterwards, you know, God puts words in your mouth. The Holy Spirit does come upon you to pray. And I said to her that, you know, the prayer that you pray, God will bless you. Yeah, and you must believe that your prayers don't just go to the ceiling. It goes up to the throne room of God because he said we must come boldly before his throne of grace, you know, to obtain his mercy. So, you know, um, people who think that they can't pray, God hears every prayer, every prayer. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um it does help, you know, if you, if you do if you're not able to find words to uh, to pray or put or put put or or put um points, you know, if you want to, if you can say in a public prayer. We remember once it was years ago in in the Coventry Church, and um, uh, this man he prayed. He must have prayed for about half an hour. We was all in a cramped room. Uh, it was <laughs> long. I think, I think uh, it was really really long prayer. It was all knelt down. It was all knelt down, you know, and it wasn't comfortable. You know, you got no room, and uh, and at the end, uh, uh, he finished his prayer, and then then the pastor said, "Lord, teach us to pray," and um, that was, and that finished the meeting. And um, uh, in in Ellen White's day, there was uh, the, someone on the platform giving the giving the prayer, and he went on and on and on, and she got up and said, "While he's finishing his prayer, we will sing the last hymn." So a public prayer should not be a long prayer. <coughs> mm. Thank you for those thoughts, Sister Anne. Sister Kezia. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Sister Arlene, for those powerful uh, comments as well. Um, I was just listening. You know, when you read this sentence, this lesson is also this lesson we also have to learn not because we see or feel that god hears us are we to believe we are to trust in his promises um and when we come to him in faith our petition enters the heart of god and when we have asked for his blessing we should believe we receive it and thank him that we have received him um, it reminds us of um, of First John. I think it's First John three verse um, um, 
when we are praying um, according to the word of God, according to the, his promises, um, he will hear our prayers. I just wanted to read uh, John, um, first John, I think it's first John 5. John 5. Um, I'm just looking for the verse. I can't find it now. But I always quote that verse. Um, when we pray according to his word, that he hears us. And when we when he does hear us, I think it's John 3. And when he hears us, because it is his will. So we know that our prayers are always in line. Um, if our prayers are in line with his word, we know that it's, uh, he hears us. And he will grant that petition which we have asked for. I'm looking for the, for the verse. It has just slipped from me. First John. Sis, I think it's, yes, I think it's 14 and 15, somewhere there. This, uh, is it chapter 3? It's First John chapter 5. Chapter 5. Yeah, I, w I wanted to, to confirm that. Uh, yes, yes, you are quite right. Let me read it. And, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Anything, the promises of God which are in his, in, in his word, if we ask that, he hears us. And if, and if we know that he hears us, what's, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So it's not about feeling, it's not about, but it's about um praying according to the word of God, praying, asking according to the word of God, we know that God will hear. It is his will to give us the Holy Spirit. It is his will to, um, to grant our petition according to his promises. So anything which we pray for, which is according to his will, we know that he hears us because it is his will already that we have that. Thank you. I just wanted to... Um, to emphasize that because a lot of times, you know, our subconscious memory uh, makes us feel that I don't feel as if God is. It's nothing about feeling it, because the Bible says we we live by faith, not by sight. It's not, not by, we walk by faith, not by, uh, uh, we walk by, by faith, not by, by sight, you know. So it's, it's nothing to do with how we feel. When we are feeling that low, that's when we actually need to pray and and uh, claim those promises of God to say, this is what you have said, God. According to your will, you, you have said this. And I'm thanking you that you, you have heard my prayer. That's when you are feeling that low. That's when we should even claim the promises of God. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Very true. Uh, Sister Hope. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that message. And uh, uh, it, it's very crucial for us in the times we're living in. And I think um, we, we tend, you know, Satan never forces. We only yield uh, to his surmisings. And Christ never forces. And we also yield to his word. So, um, because we shall always be learning and we're always learning that our, our God, he says what he says and he will do. But um, I remember uh, as a quick testimony, I was, I don't know if I've shared it before, uh, my boiler went off in the middle of winter uh, in, uh, and all the seven months from one year to the next month, I think it was in July, and no heating. When there's no heating, no hot water. So it meant that we thank God 
that uh, the cooker had a, 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 a different home. But because God knows us, he, he, I, I, he, he, he knows what we are going through. He knows our accounts. He knows our worries. He knows our concern, everything. He knows. And we have to believe that he knows. Throughout, uh, we had a guest here. We are looking after. God allowed us to go through that and to wait. We uh, and God allows us to wait for a reason. Are we going? Are we waiting according to our own time, or His own time? Because He says, uh, uh, as we know, we have to stand on His promises. Because those promises that <laughs> start started coming to me. He does all things in his time. Throughout the period of time, uh, that period, we don't we didn't know what we needed to do. We didn't know where the money is gonna come from. We didn't know how we're gonna keep warm uh, in warmth. But God provided a way. You know, he, he would say, do this, stay in one room, be in one room, be in the kitchen, be here. We never, ne that was even our best time. We never felt cold. We used even to go out in the cold. God has got a way he does things. So it's for us to trust him. In the end, I, this neighbor, my wonderful friend, she said, oh, you know, uh, but, but it's good also to share because you don't know how God is going to lead. So she was also going through a time like mine. And then she got someone to help. And she said, oh, why don't you try these people? They might help you. Okay, they might get into all your financial issues, and but they will help you. I went back on my knees and I prayed. I said, God, if it's according to your will, let it. So I put my foot forward. I rang them and they came and they they gave me a new new radiator, radiators. They gave me a new boiler. And I said, where is this money going to come from? And the man said, no, just fill in the phone. We filled in the phone. Couple of days, I think it was a week after. The boiler, the man said, you do not need to pay a penny. I paid no penny. And he gave me the invoice. It was almost 5,000 pounds. Who else can do that? Only God. So whatever we are going through, indeed, as it says, we have to trust him. We don't know how he's going to lead, but to trust that he is going to make a way where there is no way. And in this trust, we have to be praying that we abide in his will. He says, if abide with me, and your word and my word abideth in you. If you ask of anything, it shall be done by the Father in heaven. Isn't that what he says? I think it's in John chapter 15. Our God is faithful, but we have to abide. There is a condition. If we are willing and obedient, he'll give us the good of the land. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that testimony. The Lord surely works in, in mysterious ways you sometimes don't know um you know we've, we when we were children we lived in a house no heating just one room you take your uh, in winter you take your clothes out the drawer your under clothes out the drawer put them in front of the fire and there's steam because it was damp you know we've lived in all that and it's horrible yeah, it's, it's horrible horrible existence and um well it's only um where we've lived now that we've, we had central eating and at first we couldn't use it, it was like a, a ship's boiler so we had to have it sorted but um yeah, it's difficult, you know, um, especially, especially in, in winter. winter time. Yeah. And we've just gone through the saga with the washing machine. That's two months. Two months. Washing machine. Two months. And he couldn't get the parts anyway. He come and tried something else. And all it was, it was a blocked pipe. But he had to take the drum out to sort it. So two months. But we was glad it was summer. At least we could. Well, you, a few good nice washing days. Yeah, yeah, drying uh, days. Use our little posher. <laughs> use our little posher to do the washing, you know. We didn't have a dolly tub, but we had a bath and a bucket. So you get your posher, and um, I think we I think we sent her pictures on the 
on the prayer retreat, I think, how, how we did it. But um, it was good exercise, wasn't it? Yeah. And your clothes smell a lot better when you put them on the lawn than when you stick them in a dryer, because that went as well. <laughs> yeah, we got no dryer. Us, no dryer. <laughs> and then the washing machine went, but the Lord sorted it. Um, uh, Sister Dorcas, listen to the last hey. uh, thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I have a question. Uh, I always hear people saying that uh, the devil cannot read our minds. But there is this face in Job, Job 4, verse 18, when Job's friends came and they were accusing him of sinning against God. The, the verse is from verse 12. It says that now a word was secretly brought to me and my ear received a whisper of it in disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night. When deep sleep falls on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair on my body stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice saying, Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? If he puts no trust in his servants, if he charges his angels with error, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before a moth, they are broken in pieces from morning till evening. They perish forever with no one regarding. Does not their own excellence go away? They die even without wisdom. This was happening in Elias El, 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 El Paz's mind during the night while he was sleeping. It was in it was the devil who was uh, bringing these thoughts to El Fazi that Job had sinned. If God he was uh, not, uh, if if God was blaming the angels uh, of sinning, and uh, what more men? So. This always uh, comes in my mind that if the devil can't uh, know anything about our thoughts, what about uh, he is the one who will give another voice. When God is giving us a voice, the, the devil will also give us another voice. So and it will be up to us to choose which which voice to follow. So how can he not know what is happening in our mind when he is able to instill some words in our minds? It's a question. I don't know if there is anyone who can answer uh, that for me. Um, I still believe that the devil cannot read your thoughts. He can, he, he sees your situation. He guesses that he can also put thoughts in your mind, but he cannot read what your thoughts are. You know, I stand by that. that yes. Can, we, it says in the spirit of prophecy somewhere that um, he's not able to read our thoughts, but he can, he can have a good you guess. Can, he can you manipulate. Can, I mean, you, can, you can guess what people are thinking. Mm. You know, by the situation they're in and everything, and uh, you know, or what's happening around you. You know, you know, we even we can guess what people are thinking and going to do. You know, um, so thank you for that question, uh, Sister Hope. Do you have an answer to that one? Uh, perhaps, 
perhaps, I don't know, but according to word, the word of God, when we look into Jeremiah chapter 17, it says, uh, we normally read this. Uh, it says that uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And then he goes on to say, the Lord searches the heart. I, I try the reins. He tries the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. It's only God who knows the heart. The enemy does not know what's in your heart. He, as the sisters were saying, he will use influences. Like how? Now remember, a very good example is Jesus Christ when he was tempted. Okay? In the, in the wilderness when he went for 40 days and 40 nights. Didn't the devil take him? He took him. Didn't he, the devil, uh, when the devil told him to turn the, the bread into, the, the stones into, into bread. Right? He did it. And then he led Jesus. Right? He took Jesus because he did not know what is in Christ. Christ knew the word was in him. He is the word. But he was enticing him for the things there that were outside. And that is what the devil does. He doesn't know what is in our hearts. But he looks to those moments where we, we are seeking certain things. We are seeking. And he knows it. He walked with Christ. And how much more even with us. But he doesn't know what is in our hearts. He doesn't. But as we know that even Christ himself, he spoke the word. He spoke the word. Because it's, that is what was in his heart. So Satan, indeed, we yield to his temptations, but he never forces us, even in prayer. He never forces us. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Um, Sister Sharon's just uh, put something upon the chat. Uh, would you like to read it, Sister Sharon? Yes, this is a quote that you were, you were, asked, you were mentioning. That's right. I, uh, yeah, please forgive me for uh, elongating the meeting but the question was asked mm. it says sister Wright wrote satan cannot read our thoughts but he can see our actions hear our words from his long knowledge of the human family he can shape his temptations to take advantage of our weak points of character and how often do we let him into the secret of how he may obtain the victory over us. Oh, that we might control our words and actions. How strong we would become if our words were such, so were such an order that we would not be ashamed to meet the record of them in the day of judgment. How different will they appear in the day of God from what they seem when we utter them. Amen. And so the whole idea of Job's friends, if you are not governed by the spirit of God, the human reasoning is automatically going to the default of being on Satan's territory. So where this friend was surmising in the middle of the night, his friend's condition, if he had prayerfully brought the subject to God, God would have revealed Job's true situation. But he sat there with his human reasoning, looking at his sense, friend's situation and found himself in a position where he was judging a friend. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, that I think that answers the question. As there's it another is. quote on, if um, another quote being put up as well. I know we're running a bit, little bit late, but this, 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 uh, this question was an important. Thank you so much for all your answers. I understand now. I, I agree with you. Mm. Amen. Now, I'll just read this last quote. 
Satan cannot read our thoughts, but he can see our actions and hear our words. And from his lung, no, I think, is it the same one? Um, let's have a look. Uh, that's messages to young people. What yes, it's the same one. All right, it's the same it's, one. Sorry, I'm sorry for duplication. Yeah, sorry, sorry. 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 <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, right. Thank, thank you, everyone. Well, thank you, everyone that's joined, and we're a little bit late. Um, uh, uh, tomorrow is the, the new chapter, uh, Beth, Beth Sider and the Sanhedrin, uh, chapter twenty-one, and I believe Sister Dorothy will be taking that one for us. So we look forward to that. We're looking forward to that. Um, we're learning so much from these books. Yes, it's a real blessing. Um, We'll finish with a song anyway, um, How Big Is God? And God is certainly big, you know, we, he, he, there's no one bigger than God. Why his heart?
big enough to win the mighty universe. Yes, small enough to live with each of our hearts. Praise the Lord. Sister Dorothy, would you like to close in prayer for us, please? Oh dear Father, thank you. How what a privilege it is for us to have such a big God. You we want to thank you for speaking to us through the spiritual prophecy. And we want to thank you for teaching us that you are God and you answer our prayers. We want to thank you for bringing us closer to you through the word of God, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, for broadening our understanding and helping us to, to believe in you and to take you at your word. Help us not to have unbelief like the Pharisees. Help us not to doubt your holy word because you are not a man that you should lie. Help us to take you at your word and to speak less, to weigh our words. Because as we have seen, Satan cannot read our minds, but he watches our actions and listens to our words. Help us not to give him room to interfere with our plans. Help us to realize we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. To understand that his schemes, they are so well calculated to, to weigh us down and to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy us as your children. You are so wonderful to us. We thank you for this, for this, a platform where we can come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to live our characters and be pleasing to you. For Jesus said that I always do the things that please my Father. May we do everything to please you and not do anything out of selfish, uh, selfish desires but to know that you are all wise and knowing God and you can read our hearts. Help us to pray aright. Thank you for the testimonies that our sisters have given here about your goodness and how you came through for them and how you are also sanctifying us day by day through thy word. Help us to hold on to you and teach us also how to pray and help us to discern between what Satan throws at us and pretends that he's answering or you're answering our prayers when it's actually him. But help us to prayerfully weigh things and wait upon you for answers to our prayers. Be with us throughout the day. And bless each and every family member represented here. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer. Apologies, we have run over a little bit of time, but I think sometimes, uh, you know, questions need to be answered and there's, and there's the right time to do it. So thank you, everyone, for mm -hmm. um, At 12 o'clock, it will be midday prayer. At um, 6.30, 6.30, song service, followed by another timely message from Elder Turner. Elder Turner, yes. So have a nice day, everyone, and see you all later by God's grace. Thank you.